Since the war in Ukraine began, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has had to walk a delicate tightrope. While he's a close ally of Putin, who has apparently pressured him into joining the conflict, he knows there isn't popular support amongst Belarusians for an invasion of Ukraine, and any attempt to mobilize would threaten his grip on power. However, earlier this week, Lukashenko announced the formation of a Joint Regional Grouping of Forces, or RGF, between Belarusian and Russian troops, sparking some anxiety in Kyiv about the possibility of a second front with Belarus in the north. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what Lukashenko's attitude to Ukraine has been so far, why he refused to actually send in troops, and whether this is really about to change. If you like our videos, then be sure to subscribe. Currently, 70% of you haven't made the jump, so we'd really appreciate your support. This story in Ukraine has been moving so fast lately that we've had to make a number of videos about it in the last couple of weeks. So make sure you stick around on TLDR EU so you don't miss any of the latest developments. And it really helps us out, and we really appreciate your support. So before we get into the most recent developments, a bit of context. In the last couple of years, Russia and Belarus have become anti-Western authoritarian besties. This really kicked off after Belarus's presidential election in 2020, which didn't go down well with the rest of Europe. Over his reign, Lukashenko has become ever more authoritarian, and every election since 1994 has been considered by international monitors to be neither free nor fair. This one was no different. Official results claimed that Lukashenko had implausibly won a massive 80% of the total vote, while the main opposition candidate, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, had won just 10%, and the election was marred by reports of state-sanctioned violence and election fraud. The results of this election led to widespread protests across Belarus, and a violent crackdown by security forces involving the detainment of some 7,000 Belarusians. In response, many countries, including the EU, refused to recognize the election results, and some, including the EU, UK, US, Canada and Switzerland, imposed sanctions on Belarus. These sanctions put a massive strain on Belarus's economy, but luckily for Lukashenko, Putin was there to help, providing a source of imports and a $1.5 billion loan to tide him over. Russia was already by far and away its largest trading partner pre-sanctions, but in the last couple of years, Belarus has become even more reliant on Russia to the point of economic dependence. Anyway, in November of last year, relations hit a new high as Lukashenko and Putin signed off on 28 so-called Union State programs, which aimed to deepen Russo-Belarusian cooperation and eventually facilitate a political union between the two countries. Yep, you heard that right. Russia and Belarus are eventually planning on becoming one country. This idea first popped up in 1999, when the two countries signed a treaty with the eventual aim of creating a single, quote, union state. But it basically fell away in the 2000s, after Lukashenko decided he didn't want any part of it. In the last couple of years, however, as relations have improved, Lukashenko has shown a renewed interest in the project. Now, we should say here that relations between the two countries aren't perfect, and a political union is still a long way off. There were originally 35 union state programs, and many of the 28 that remain are just vague promises, saying the two countries hope to agree on something in the future. Nonetheless, the two sides are sufficiently close that many analysts expect Belarus to somehow lend a hand in the invasion, and there were credible reports back in February that Belarusian air and ground forces would support Russia's assault on Kyiv. Lukashenko also held a rigged referendum, enabling Russia to station nukes on Belarusian territory on the same day that Putin put Russia's nuclear forces on high alert, suggesting a degree of military cooperation between the two. In the end, however, Belarusian forces didn't help with the assault on Kyiv, with reports from Ukrainian intelligence claiming that senior figures in the Belarusian military told Lukashenko that they refused to participate in any attack. Since then, this pattern has recurred. Lukashenko has talked a big game and helped out with logistics, but refrained from actually sending troops. However, in the last couple of days, Lukashenko has apparently upped the ante. 
After Russia used Belarusian bases to launch those Shahed drones, Lukashenko gave a furious press conference where he seemed to claim that both Ukraine and Poland were getting ready to attack Belarus. Lukashenko then promptly announced that Belarus and Russia would be forming a joint regional grouping of forces, or RGF, which sparked some speculation that Belarus was finally about to join in and invade Ukraine. Ukraine seemed to take these warnings seriously. In a video call on Tuesday, Zelensky warned G7 leaders that Putin was pressurizing Lukashenko, and Ukrainian officials told the Financial Times that they were so worried about a Belarusian invasion that they'd redeployed troops to north around Kiev in anticipation. So is a Belarusian invasion actually going to happen? Well, history suggests otherwise. Lukashenko has pulled similar stunts in the past. In February, Belarusian troops lined up on the Ukrainian border. In March, Lukashenko said his country would, quote, need to respond to what he described as Ukrainian provocations. And in July, Lukashenko deployed troops on the Ukrainian border after claiming that Ukraine had fired missiles at Belarusian military posts and that NATO was planning to annex Belarusian border territories. Nonetheless, despite these recurrent threats, Lukashenko never actually does anything. This is largely because Belarusians just don't support Putin's invasion. There were large anti-war protests after the referendum that allowed Putin to station nukes in Belarus, and polling by Belarusian political opposition found that only 13% of Belarusians support the Russian campaign, and only 12% believe that Belarus should send soldiers. Now, this polling should be taken with a massive pinch of salt, but public discontent with Putin's invasion in other post-Soviet states like Kazakhstan implies that it's at least plausible that a majority of Belarusians oppose what's happening in Ukraine. And, well, this makes sense. Even if they're friendly with Russia, other post-Soviet states worry that, if Putin decided to invade Ukraine just because it used to be part of Russia, what's stopping them from being next? This is why, in 2014, after Russia's annexation of Crimea, Lukashenko, yep, the same Lukashenko who's parroting Putin's lines about NATO, made a point of delivering his annual speech in Belarusian instead of Russian, declaring, we are not Russian, we are Belarusians. You get the idea, Belarusians don't support Putin's invasion of Ukraine and would probably riot if Lukashenko tried to mobilize. If his words in 2014 are anything to go by, Lukashenko probably doesn't support it either, which is why Belarusian involvement still looks unlikely, whatever Lukashenko says in public. Similarly, it's also worth noting that Belarus is still sending copious amounts of ammunition to Russian forces in Donbass. If Belarus was serious about opening up a northern front with Ukraine, it'd be saving its ammo for its own soldiers. Anyway, you get the idea. While Lukashenko's rhetoric is as hawkish as ever, history suggests he's more bark than bite. And the fact that invasion is so unpopular in Belarus means that a Belarusian invasion of Ukraine still looks unlikely, albeit not impossible. Now, unsurprisingly, the war in Ukraine continues to dominate the news cycle. So if you want to keep up with the latest updates on and off the battlefield, then be sure to subscribe to the channel.